Let's talk about pests, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the insects and the rodents that may be. Mm, oh yeah. Hello friends. Welcome back to another Agents of Deterioration video. Today we're talking about pests and no, I do not mean your little brother who keeps running around in circles and poking you. I'm talking bugs and all those other creepy crawlies that can cause harm to cultural heritage objects. Pests are living organisms that can damage and destroy objects. So we're talking about microorganisms, insects, rodents, birds and bats, all those things. A good rule of thumb is if you don't want it in your house, you don't want it in your museum or storage room either. And don't get me started on those people who have mice and rats as pets. Like, ugh, no, no, I can't do it. There are of course things similar to pests that don't really count as pests because they actually eat the pests. So think of things like spiders and centipedes. That being said, you probably don't want them either though because that means that pests are nearby. And then also when they die, their bodies become food for the pests. It's all about the circle of life. Ladybugs are also considered, quote, good pests, which is like a relief because who wants to hate a ladybug? But of course, you don't really want them trolling around collection storage either. Let's get into the different subtypes of pests. Microorganisms such as fungi, mold, and bacteria are pretty much everywhere. These can be airborne and then brought into an environment in various types of ways. Bacteria can also be brought into a collection by contaminated flood water or standing water. So there's our agent water up to its no good tricks again. I thought we handled it already. For bacteria to survive and thrive, there needs to be a generally high relative humidity in the area. And we'll be talking about relative humidity in another video as it's also an agent, but imagine a humid sort of wet environment. This is where bacteria love to hang out. Mold and fungi are dependent on water that's actually in an object. They need this moisture to germinate, but once they're fully fledged, their spores can spread into the air and find another juicy place to take up residence. Microorganisms can digest, eat, stain, and attract other pests and insects, as some insects and animals like to eat that stuff. Microorganisms also pose health risks to people because they can cause allergic reactions and respiratory problems. Insects are the most numerous of the pests that we're gonna be talking about in the animal category. Think of moths, silverfish, bookworms, termites, and all the fun things that like to eat delicate organic museum objects. Each insect has their own palate, let's say, and they're attracted to different types of materials, so you'll have to be on the lookout for different species based on what your objects are comprised of. Rodents, like rats and mice, like to just gnaw all the damn time on materials that will help sharpen their teeth. They usually come on the scene when there's a decent food source around, so mitigating that is key. Rodents shed a lot of hair and leave behind a lot of poop, which can then spread to other collections. Birds and bats like to build nests, so they might take bits and pieces of organic objects in order to do so. They also love to poop, and all the other pests love to eat it. Their nest can also contain parasites, which is just not fun to talk about, and too much poop can also become a health hazard for people. So we know who our pest friends are. Now, let's get into what they want and what materials and objects are vulnerable to them. What these pests are looking for are alternatives to what they would find in the natural world, seeing as they've somehow found themselves inside. With mold, every single organic and inorganic surface is susceptible if the conditions are right. We talked about those conditions a little bit earlier, but damn things are essentially like chocolate ice cream to mold. Cellulose and proteinaceous materials like paper and parchment are particularly susceptible because they're very porous, soft, and super easy to digest. That being said, I do not recommend that you try to eat paper or parchment. Save that for the mold. Insects will eat a variety of things, but as I said before, they are very individualistic to the types of material that they like. So for example, silverfish eat paper, termites eat wood, moths love textiles, you get it. Rodents just love to chew, so anything that gives them a good bang for their buck is open game. They also like to gather things for nesting, like insulation and packing materials. Birds and bats are more harmful to structures than they are to objects, but nesting can become quite a problem, and then also when they poop or when they die, a lot of pests show up for the buffet. So then how can we prevent pests from ruining our lives? The first thing to try and do is to remove or limit things that would attract or feed pests. Use protective barriers like containers or other practices to deter pests from finding their way in. Also, don't eat or bring food into where collections are because no matter how tidy you are, you're gonna leave crumbs and a bug is just 
salivating, waiting for you to drop it. Bringing plants and soil into museum environments are also probably not a good idea because there could be bugs hiding inside there. Keeping a low relative humidity is also important to stop mold and bacteria growth. Museums also use tools like glue traps to catch bugs, and they also can use things like shield vents to prevent rodents and birds from coming inside. You also want to be monitoring your collections regularly in order to catch any early signs of infestation. When a new object or artifact comes into a museum, it's a good idea to put it in a quarantine room or some sort of separate space in order to make sure that nothing has come along for the ride. And this way, if something did, it's not going to get into the rest of your collection. A lot of places will freeze objects or remove oxygen from them in order to kill anything that's hiding in the nooks and crannies. On the opposite spectrum of that, some people will use heat or heat from the sun with objects in these fun little like pillows to kill the nasty bugs. These are just some of the treatment methods that a lot of people use to remove pests. A great thing that museums do are implement things called Integrated Pest Management Programs, or IPMs for short. IPMs are essentially risk assessment and action plans in order to reduce the chance of pests coming into contact with collections. There are a lot of different techniques and ways to prevent pests, and as every institution will have a different environment and resources, these plans are written specifically for each institution. So there you have it, friends. Hope I didn't pester you too much with this agent of deterioration. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on all the other agents of deterioration. Big thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the channel and gain access to some fun behind the scenes content, go on over and become a patron. The link is in my description below. Here are all of my socials, and I'll see you all again for the next agent in three days. Stay dirty, my friends.